U.S. never imagined it could happen in this country, and yet today it did happen. A major American newspaper published a story, apparently an entirely accurate story, about a presidential candidate. The tech monopolies that control American media feared this story might hurt that candidate whom they favor. So three weeks before a national election, they shut the whole thing down. They prevented the public from reading the news. They didn't apologize for doing this. They didn't bother to make up reasonable sounding justifications for it. They just did it exactly as the Chinese government does. These are monopolies. They have all the power. You have none. They don't have to care what you think, and they don't. This was mass censorship on a scale that America has never experienced, not in 245 years. And it's a threat to all of us. Democracies only function when there is a free exchange of information between citizens. We no longer have that. This is a dark moment. Here are the details. This morning, the New York Post published a series of emails that describe Hunter Biden's lucrative relationship with a Ukrainian energy company called Burisma, and then describe how his father, then the vice president of the United States, intervened to help his son peddle influence. Now, we've known the outlines of this story for quite some time, but these emails add damning detail. No one appears to dispute that they're real, not even the Joe Biden campaign. You're hearing whispers tonight that's all part of a Russian disinformation campaign. If this is a hoax, it is the most complex, sophisticated hoax ever perpetrated. It doesn't seem possible. There are too many. There's too much detail. These emails came from a laptop, an Apple laptop, that was dropped off at a Delaware computer repair shop last year and then abandoned there. After a certain number of days with no payment, the shop's owner took legal possession of the laptop. He looked inside. There were tens of thousands of emails, including exchanges with representatives of foreign companies and foreign governments. The laptop apparently belonged to Hunter Biden. The shop owner was stunned by this, by the appearance of corruption, and he was afraid for his family. So late last year, he gave the laptop to the FBI. He kept a copy of the hard drive for himself, but he never heard back from the FBI. By May, he was anxious, so he made overtures to Senator Mike Lee's office and at least one conservative nonprofit. He emailed their websites, but no one responded. Finally, the man contacted Rudy Giuliani's office, and today's story is the result of that. Well, the tech monopolies instantly crushed it the moment it appeared. An executive at Facebook called Andy Stone, a former Democratic staffer, announced that his company would censor the New York Post story. As he put it, Facebook would be, quote, reducing its distribution on our platform. Twitter quickly followed suit by locking the New York Post's entire Twitter account. One of the biggest newspapers in the world banned from Twitter. Twitter then prevented its users from sharing the New York Post story, both privately and publicly. Those who tried to share it got this message, quote, your tweet couldn't be sent because this link has been identified by Twitter or our partners as being potentially harmful. Harmful? In a separate explanation, Twitter wrote this, quote, we don't permit the use of our services to directly distribute content obtained through hacking that contains private information, may put people in physical harm or danger, or contains trade secrets. Yes. The same Twitter that just promoted a New York Times story about the president's private tax returns, obviously obtained illegally, that Twitter. And who, by the way, was hacked here? No one was hacked. Twitter never addressed that. As for, quote, trade secrets, there were none. We already knew that Hunter Biden was trading on his father's office to make 50 grand a month from the Ukrainians. In October, he admitted it. You didn't have any extensive knowledge about natural gas or Ukraine itself, though. Uh, no, but I think that I had as much knowledge as anybody else that was on the board, if not more. In the list that you gave me of the reasons why you're on that board, you did not list the fact that you were the son of the vice president. Of course, president. yeah. No, I, I, what role do you think that played? I think that it is impossible for me to be on any of the boards that I just mentioned without saying that I'm the son of the vice president of the United States. Oh, thanks for acknowledging reality. So we knew the outlines. What we didn't know until today was how brazen this was. Hunter Biden didn't simply sell access to his father, the vice president, or take cash to influence American foreign policy. No, it's weirder than that. As he schemed to extract more money from Burisma, Hunter Biden didn't refer to his father as his father. He referred to Joe Biden, the vice president, as, quote, my guy. On April 13th, 2014, for example, Hunter Biden wrote this to his business partner, quote, the announcement of my guy's upcoming travel should be characterized as part of our advice and thinking, end quote. Hunter Biden added that he needed to be, quote, protected financially and wanted a long-term role with Burisma. Quote, the contract should begin now, not after the upcoming visit of my guy. 
That should include a retainer in the range of $25,000. It's not clear if Biden got that retainer, but we know he did get a high paying job at Burisma. Then in May 2014, just weeks after Hunter Biden joined the board of that company, a top executive there let him know why he was being paid. Very explicitly, quote, we urgently need your advice on how you could use your influence to convey a message, signal, etc., to stop what we consider to be politically motivated actions. The executive wrote that in an email. Quote, use your influence to convey a message. What message? What does that mean? Well, another email from the same executive obtained by the New York Post, dated April 17, 2015, explains in very clear terms what it means. Quote, Dear Hunter, Thank you for inviting me to D.C. and giving an opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. It's really an honor and pleasure. Oh, that's what you're not allowed to read. And you can see why Facebook and Twitter don't want to allow you to read it. If Joe Biden met with Burisma executives at the request of his son for the profit of his own family, it becomes very clear that Joe Biden's previous denials were lies. Just last year, Joe Biden was telling us he had no idea what his son was doing at Burisma. You were the vice president running point on Ukraine. The average Joe hears that and says, that sounds fishy. What's your understanding of what your son was doing for an extraordinary amount of money? I don't know what he was doing. I know he was on the board. I found out he was on the board after he was on the board. And that was it. And there's nobody. Well, you've had a lot of time. Isn't this something you want to get to the bottom of? No, because I trust my son. But that doesn't pass the smell test. Like when you're vice president, isn't there a higher standard? Don't you need to know no. what's happening with your family? Don't you need to put down no. some guardrails? Um, um, unless there was something that was, uh, there was something on its face that was wrong. There's nothing on its face that was wrong. Nothing on its face that was wrong. That was before we saw these emails. You'll remember that back in 2018, Joe Biden explained that he got the top prosecutor in Ukraine fired. That prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, said he was planning to investigate Burisma when he was stripped of his job. Here's how Joe Biden explained slash bragged about how he canned Viktor Shokin. I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had they were walking out to press conference. Said, "No, I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, well, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. Why is the vice president of the United States firing prosecutors in Ukraine? Pause for a moment and ask yourself that. That's bizarre behavior. It doesn't help the United States in any way. Why was he doing that? At the time, Biden's handlers denied there was anything wrong with this. They just said Shokin was corrupt, and somehow the world was benefiting by Shokin getting fired. They didn't explain how he'd benefit from that. But, of course, Joe Biden didn't do it for his son. He didn't know anything about Burisma. He didn't know what Hunter Biden was up to. No clue. Then last October, we showed you a photograph of Joe and Hunter Biden golfing with a board member at Burisma, Hunter Biden's business partner, a man called Devin Archer. The Biden campaign never explained that photograph. Our media, of course, never really followed up. Instead, just as they're now rushing to bury the New York Post story, CNN rushed into Joe Biden's defense. The impeachment inquiry is centered on President Trump's attempts to get political dirt from Ukraine on Vice President Biden and his son Hunter. Mr. Vice President, President Trump has falsely accused your son of doing something wrong while serving on a company board in Ukraine. I want to point out there's no evidence of wrongdoing by either one of you. A few months later, we got some sense why Anderson Cooper was so careful in the interview you just saw. In December, a voter in Iowa tried to ask Joe Biden about Burisma and his fitness for office. Joe Biden lost control of himself. He called the man fat and then challenged him to a push-up contest. So you're a damn liar, man. That's not true. And no one has ever said that. And you want to check my shape on Let's do push-ups together, man. Let's do, let's run. Let's do whatever you want to do. Let's take a nice pizza. You said I set up my son to work in an oil company. Isn't that what you said? Get your words straight, Jack. But look, fat, look, here's the deal. Here's the deal. What is the deal, actually? That's a question every American, no matter what your political views, has a right to an answer. 